welcome students to one more session of your thermodynamics i think we are coming uh, to end of the chapter i have discussed every corner of the textbook i will finish up the topic with the gibbs free energy as well as you know uh, bohm calorie meter so today the topic which i have chosen to teach you all is gibbs energy right so whenever this concept of gibbs energy because basically the many numericals are asked on this concept we will do that also so if i have to define gibbs free energy what is gibbs free energy so let's write the definition that is gibbs free energy this is what is the first thing so basically we have just learned different concepts in thermodynamics that is system surroundings uh, isn't it in that system also isolated system adiabatic system isothermal isochoric isn't it so boundary also as we have studied different terminologies extensive properties and intensive now i have also given you the definition of free energy now when i have to define the free energy only thing i'll say that is it is defined as energy available in the system so we have already studied what a system isn't it so energy available in the system okay <clears throat> so if what is this energy used for this is this energy is used for conversion into useful work conversion into useful work okay this is the most <coughs> sorry important thing conversion into useful work so that free energy is called gibbs free energy right now what is this gibbs energy what is this teaches let's see so whenever you are speaking about gibbs energy so it is denoted by g capital g remember this so this gibbs free energy and this and how they are related what is that we will learn so here i said available energy to convert it into useful work that free energy we are speaking terms of gibbs free but whenever you are learning gibbs energy concept we will start this concept from the entropy that is why i have done the entropy concept earlier okay so what did we learn entropy in that entropy is denoted by delta s or change in entropy is delta s now when i have to start with gibbs energy the first important concept is the total entropy change you are going to start your answer like this total entropy change okay what is the total entropy change and that total entropy change accompanies a process means it's going to accompany a process or a system how is it den denoted total entropy change so total means total entropy change means entropy is denoted by s yes. total this one delta s so this is total what is the total entropy change depending on it is depending on the entropy change of the system plus entropy change of the surroundings also okay system and surroundings this is the total entropy change right now we've already seen in the earlier video <coughs> what do we see we said <coughs> sorry we said whenever i'm taking a condition of constant temperature and pressure so what will happen under conditions of constant temperature and pressure what do i write delta s surroundings this concept what will happen i am just maintaining it it will become equal to delta h system by t i have done this derivation in the previous video watch that i have already shown how did i get this that now so what did we say earlier that to, the entropy change total is equal to system plus surroundings but this is this value so let's substitute that value in that what do i get if i substitute the value i am going to get s total which total that is change is equal to delta s system minus delta h system by t this is the thing yeah right so uh, now i've come I'm, i'll just substitute the value in that or i can also write the same this one as just see here i am cross multiplying this with this what am i doing i'm multiplying t with this what it it will turn to t delta s total is equal to <coughs> uh, like the same thing if you multiply here also t delta system minus h delta h system okay right so this is the thing means i multiply the cross multiply and the other side also both sides now, so i can also write this thing i am just changing it how can i write the same thing as t delta is total is equal to because i multi cross multiplying that i can write as t g why because this is nothing but change in gibbs free energy change in gibbs energy isn't it right this is equal to what 
it is equal to delta H system minus T delta S system. Right. Now, so here I am just gradually coming into a concept of Gibbs free Gibbs energy also. From that Gibbs energy, I'll take you into the relationship between delta G and this one. Now, for example, like most important thing with this relation, now I, I need to uh, give you the most important concept. What is that? Suppose if you have, or if you uh, just will ask you whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. So, suppose if for spontaneous process, there are two things here. I also taught you what is spontaneity in the earlier video for spontaneous process and for non spontaneous process. Let's see. For spontaneous process, delta S total is greater than zero right that means and the, under this condition what will happen what does it this imply that is delta g it's in temperature and pressure should be less than zero negative then only the reaction is spontaneous now other way for non-spontaneous process delta g temperature and pressure should will be greater than zero the other way if i have to write delta s total is less than zero so when these conditions are observed then we call the reaction as spontaneous or non-spontaneous in nature right so now uh, equilibrium condition that also we should speak isn't it so at equilibrium what will happen <coughs> so we have written non-spontaneous and spontaneous at equilibrium condition this quantity delta t and p it will become equal to zero that is the thing now this G, delta j gibbs free energy is a state function and this extensive property why did i say that because it, it it depends upon the state the initial state and the final state right <coughs> so what quantity we should say gibbs free energy or gibbs energy rather is both a state function as well as extensive property remember this they will ask you so extensive property right so and it is how is it given so extensive property i said so this depends on the formula given as del g is equal to h minus ts so how can i write this i can write it as delta g at temperature and pressure which is equal to delta h minus t delta s isn't it i can write this formula and when will the delta g uh, like when will be the maximum work when delta g is equal to w prime this is maximum work now what is mag, uh, w prime this w prime it, it denotes the maximum non-expansion work maximum non-expansion work right right so this is the concept what did i say i've started with the concept like this i've given you the definition then i've started with this concept of entropy then i gradually took into the total enthalpy change and after so total entropy change after that i gradually came into concept for non spontaneous for spontaneous spontaneous non spontaneous reaction non spontaneous as well as equilibrium now we are going to learn a concept called standard reaction or standard gibbs free energy so i'm going to introduce as standard gibbs energy okay it's only i'm not coming to in free energy it is gibbs energy only it is denoted by delta g naught so how is this denoted in represented delta g naught is always equal to the difference between what standard molar gibbs energy of the product and the reactant remember so once again delta g naught is called standard gibbs free energy it is the difference between summation of delta g naught of the products suppose if i take this as products minus summation of number of moles of delta g naught of the reactant okay right fine so this delta g naught at equilibrium when you're taking it in the equilibrium conditions this will become equal to delta g naught is equal to minus rt ln k right so this is one formula which you should remember for gibbs energy and at equilibrium conditions this is that it is right at equilibrium that is k is equal to equilibrium constant right now i've learned two things now let us see the relation between delta g and delta g naught so let's write that relation between between delta g that is gibbs energy as well as standard gibbs energy both the relations we will see 
Fine. So delta G is what? Just now let us recall it once again. Delta G is the standard Gibbs free energy change. But when do I take? When the pure reactants change into products. Isn't it? With specific, means, you know, each is specific in the standard state. They are specifically in the standard state where the reactants convert into product. That's first. What is delta G? Delta G is a change in Gibbs free energy, uh, sorry, Gibbs energy when the reaction occurs under conditions of constant composition. This is specific in standard state. This is under constant composition. I'm repeating once again. Delta G is the change in Gibbs energy. Yeah. When the reaction occurs under conditions of constant composition. Perfect. The com composition, whatever is there. Uh, that constant composition, then I take consider delta G. When will I consider delta G naught? I'll consider delta G naught when the pure reactants change into products. Yes, with specific with specificity means they should be specific in the standard state. They should exist in the standard state. Done. So what did I say? Now I'm going to relate. What is the relation? Delta G is equal to delta G naught plus R T L N Q. What is Q now? Q is called reaction quotient. Reaction quotient. Now at equilibrium, what will happen? At equilibrium. <coughs> Delta G quantity will become 0. Then Q will be equal to K equilibrium. So, this Q will be equal to K equilibrium. So, at equilibrium, delta G is equal to 0. Then what will happen? Q value will be equal to K equilibrium. Let us substitute the values. So, delta G naught is equal to minus RT ln K equilibrium. This is the thing. Right, so this is the relation between delta G and delta G naught. This is one formula for delta G and delta G naught. Done. So, meet you students with the next video where I'll be speaking about thermodynamic criteria of equilibrium under different conditions. I'll be taking the thermodynamic first law and I'll be doing with different uh, temperature conditions or pressure conditions. How will it vary? Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Meet you in the next video.